Pad 39B for final preparations for a test flight that will provide NASA an early opportunity to evaluate and prove hardware, models, facilities, and ground operations associated with the Ares-1 launch vehicle. The test also will allow the Ares project team to gather critical data during ascent of the integrated stack, which includes a simulated Ares vehicle and simulated Orion crew module and launch abort system. The data collected will be used to verify the effectiveness of the rocket's design and ensure that it is safe and stable in flight before astronauts begin traveling in orbit. The Ares-1 rocket is designed to carry astronauts to space in the Orion crew exploration vehicle. Liftoff is scheduled for October 27. After two days of intense competition, Three teams out of a field of 19 emerged victorious and claimed a total of $750,000 in NASA prizes at this year's Regolith Excavation Challenge. The robot has this large hopper. These scoops pick up Regolith on the ground down here, carry it up, dump it into the hopper. The hopper can raise up to dump the Regolith out and the drivetrain is tank treads, very simple. The challenge was held at the Ames Research Center where competitors were required to use mobile robotic digging machines capable of excavating at least 330 pounds of simulated moon dirt, known as regolith, and depositing it into a container in 30 minutes or less. The rules required the remotely controlled vehicles to contain their own power sources and weigh no more than 176 pounds. The Regolith Excavation Challenge is one of six NASA Centennial Challenges. The program seeks to drive progress in aerospace technology by encouraging competition in aerospace research and development. The Centennial Challenges program in NASA's Innovative Partnerships Program Office sponsors the Regolith Excavation Challenge. Scientists and engineers from NASA's Exploration Technology Development Program and the U.S. Geological Survey traveled to the Stillwater Mine in Nye, Montana to collect rock samples for processing into simulant, a material that mimics lunar regolith, the soil found on the moon's surface. The simulant will be used to test new technologies that could decrease the detrimental effects of dust on astronaut health and on lunar hardware and make rocket fuel for space travel. Other objectives focus on extracting oxygen from regolith to make water and air, or its potential use in lunar construction. NASA hopes to build a permanent facility on the moon where astronauts would live and work. They select those particular rocks based on the, looking at it through an eye lens or just visually looking at it. And they can see based on the rock what the mineralogy is, and they're looking for a particular type of mineralogy. And so they tell us which rocks to gather, and when we pick those up in buckets and bins, and then eventually those will be shipped to Denver, where they will wash them, clean them, sort them, and then uh, crush them and grind them into the actual lunar simulants. Because no one simulant has the properties to accomplish all test objectives, various types are being developed and will later be turned into prototypes for full-scale production. What's special about Stillwater material in the United States, there's no other area that is really close to this composition. This composition of this rock is very similar to what's on the moon. This is not the first time artificial regolith has been created, but scientists say the material collected from still water is unprecedented in its complexity and similarity to that found in the highlands region of the lunar surface. The Dryden Flight Research Center held a groundbreaking ceremony for a new state-of-the-art building. The 22,000-square-foot Consolidated Information Technology Center will incorporate water and energy conservation features and use durable materials that won't degrade indoor environmental quality. The building will be constructed to meet the center's current and future information technology requirements. It is the first green building to be constructed at Dryden. Employees at the Langley Research Center took part in a celebration for the center's full-scale tunnel that is scheduled to be demolished early next year. The event included a slideshow presentation of the tunnel's history and a tour through the facility. During the years when Langley was the NACA Langley Aeronautical Laboratory, the tunnel attracted pioneers and luminaries like Orville Wright, Charles Lindbergh, Glenn Curtis, and Howard Hughes. I went to work in Full Scale Tunnel on June 10, 1958. It was still NACA. But we knew NASA was coming. 
and I went to work in the boundary layer and helicopter branch working on vertical lift. Went through school and the first thing I did was open a textbook in aeronautics uh, and had the full-scale tunnel and lo and behold I never, never dreamed that I would have uh, been working there so actually coming there was a great experience. Tests conducted included U.S. World War II aircraft, the P-51 aircraft, the Mercury entry capsule, submarines, and NASCAR vehicles. In all 796 tests conducted in the tunnel, some of the results have been crucial to the future of flight. The tunnel, often referred to as the Langley Wind Tunnel, is one of dozens at the center. Let her rip. A portrait unveiling ceremony was held at NASA headquarters to honor former agency head Sean O'Keefe. Appointed by President George W. Bush, O'Keefe was the agency's 10th administrator, serving from 2001 to 2005. Many of the programs you invested a lot of time and money in uh, continue to exist today, and you should be very proud of the Mars rovers, for example, the International Space Station, the Space Shuttle, still operating today in conducting valuable research in no small part due to your leadership. This place is about trying. And while the risk is substantial, to choose not to continue in that quest would deny the soul. And I learned that very, very profoundly in this amazing experience to work with extraordinary people that every single day I knew were far better at what they did to make this place great than I could ever be. I thank you for this honor and a great privilege of being here. O'Keefe's image was captured by award-winning artist Dean Paulus, whose subjects have included the Nobel laureate Dr. George Hitchings and General Richard Ellis, commander of SAC and NATO. And that's This Week at NASA. For more on these and other stories, log on to www.nasa.gov.